you know, I go through pictures every once in a while. And it's kind of incredible what, what some pictures kind of have the power to kind of bring up in me of memories and times and places and things and just things that are so far removed from my life of today and the world I've kind of created that I forget so many things. I'm sure I'm not alone in that. I'm sure that's everybody. Um, but sometimes I'm kind of just hit with these just memories of just such a such a foreign world to kind of like the world in which I've lived for as long as I have the last 20 years. Um, I'll be 42 this July. And I see this picture from 2002, 20 years ago, of me as a younger man. Me as the, I'm sure a couple of y'all have seen that picture. And that's me as a, as a 22 year old punk kid. And just the memories of just everything that kind of just flood into that, this one picture are just incredible. And I had this picture along with this other picture, a guy from that time who was a, probably one of the closest guys that I was close to during that period of my life. And his name's JJ. He's from DC somewhere, if I'm not mistaken, talking about 20 years ago. But me and JJ probably spent a good three years together at ECI in particular. And we would just fucking laugh and laugh, just make the best of the world in which we find ourselves. And we would just laugh and fucking laugh at it all. And we had been there for a couple years together. And this is ECI, East Side, housing is six, D tier. So it's 100 men to, to a tier 98. It's 24 cells downstairs, 24 cells upstairs, 98 people in total. And every probably week or two weeks or something, we get like the couple new guys that'll come into the tier. And one particular week, we get this guy named Paul comes in. He's an old, older white guy. I think he come from Hagerstown somewhere. And he's just a real quiet older guy. You know, we're usually sitting at our table kind of playing dominoes, pea knuckles, spades, that type of stuff. And Paul's just kind of just to himself, just kind of scoping it out, you know, getting a feel for the place, getting a vibe for who's who, what's what. And, you know, over the course of maybe like a month or so, he had kind of tried to get in where he could fit in, incorporate himself in car games, dominoes, stuff like that. You know, so over time, I'm getting to know Paul a little bit. You know, we're not close or nothing, but just hey, he's somebody I'm aware of. We've spoken. Uh, you know, he cuts hair, so he's cutting her hair and shit. He makes wine every once in a while. He just seems like a cool, he's like chill old dude. This old man Paul had been in his tier with us for a good, good couple months, maybe five, six months. And we get another kind of drop of a couple of new guys. And on this run, we get a, a new kid named Eric. He's 19. Kid looks like he's fucking 12. All of 100 25 pounds, soaking wet, five foot two, little kid. Well, he comes in with 20. So he ain't even 20 years old, got 20. He got a big chunk of time ahead of him. Just just a young kid. And you you know he's clueless. He's green. He's, he, he's trying to learn it as he goes. Trying not to get fucked up in the meantime. Just quiet, stuck to himself. He kind of followed the same line of Paul, you know, but which is most people when they come into somewhere that they don't really know anybody. And you're just trying just to get a feel for the overall. This is, you know, the world. So, to little Eric, he kind of follows the same suit. And that little Eric's up across the hall from me. Like, dead across the cell. Across the hall in the cell directly across from me. Old man Paul slept downstairs. So, over time, Eric kind of incorporates himself, you know, into this group every once in a while. We're all just, we all slowly started to know each other. A couple months goes by. You know, everybody's kind of getting comfortable, accustomed to the daily life of where we live. And we all really started to get a real weird vibe between Paul and Eric. Like it was, it, it wasn't a blatant, you know, sign vibe of nothing weird. It was just shit wasn't right. Like it just, it wasn't like, like it wasn't like me and JJ. Like me and JJ were fucking dapping and laughing and fucking parting our ways these two were just a little too close to each other at times and it just didn't make sense so time goes by a couple weeks go by we're all getting that vibe that these two got something going on so 
At separate times, for separate reasons, they both found themselves on cell restriction, which is pretty much only come out for meals. You know, like when they pop the doors for breakfast, lunch, dinner, you come out, sit in a rec hall, go eat, come back, you're locked in. These guys on cell restriction, like you, you're not coming out at all during the day for like the rec, yard, none of that shit. Like you come out at a separate time to do your own showers and shit while everybody else still locked in. So these dudes have been on cell restriction for a couple days. Like I say, little Eric sleep across the hall from me. So I see Eric all the time. Like when the doors pop, like it's, we're both crossing each other's paths. So one night at dinner, they hit the doors for, for dinner. I'm kind of walking out. I see old man Paul come out to rec hall and we kind of cross paths and I look at him. I'm like, Yo, what the fuck are you doing? Because this is just kind of, you don't do that. I mean, you do, but you got to be careful because you just make something worse. You get caught in somebody else's cell. So I'm looking at him like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, man, me and Eric going to play cards. So he tells me, right? I don't, true shit, I don't think nothing of it. Just go about my shit. I'm thinking these motherfuckers just want to just see somebody other than that cell buddy for a little bit. It's really kind of as much as I chalked it up to. <laughs> so go to dinner. We're all out for probably 20, 30 minutes for dinner. And it's real kind of controlled movement. Like everybody goes at one time. Everybody sat, they eat. Everybody comes back at the same time. So when everybody's coming back from dinner, it's just like a slow trickle of kind of everybody from the chow hall just kind of coming back into the tier. Now the doors will stay locked until you actually come back on the tier. They'll hit the doors at one time. Everybody go in, police come behind, make sure all the doors are locked. So I kind of got back like a little before the crowd. And I'm kind of walking up to my cell. I'm going to fuck with Eric and Paul. I'm going to go bang on the door like I'm the police. Is kind of what I'm thinking. They got the towel. It's a big, big glass kind of like skinny window that kind of goes about three foot high. They had a towel kind of wedge, which is what you would do if you was in there getting a tattoo, smoking a cigarette. You just want to be alone. You put the towel up typically, and that just makes sure nobody can't just walk up, just see what you're doing. So I'm not thinking nothing of it. I walk up. Boom, 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 boom. Open up. The towel fucking drops. And this is my fucking word. Little boy Eric laid in the bed. So, so this is what I see. Little boy Eric laid just like this. <laughs> and Paul on his knees going to work on oh, little Eric. Oh, bro, I lose it. Oh, my fucking Lord. I'm going down the hall just hands it like, oh, Lord Jesus. Y'all ain't going to fucking believe it. Oh, man, Paul. Run straight to the crack of the door. Perry! 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 We was wrestling! We was wrestling! I'm fucking dying. I got JJ. I'm already telling JJ. I said, bro, oh man, Paul was in there putting work on Lil Eric. Putting work on him, yo. We're fucking rolling. They hit the doors. Oh man, Paul's got seconds to get out of this cell, downstairs, into his cell before the police come around locking the fucking doors. Paul is fucking caught. I mean, Paul, Paul knows what I seen. Paul knows what I seen. Like, there's no denying what I saw right fucking here. Paul's trying to get to me bad. Like, bro, yo, it wasn't, bro, it wasn't nothing, bro, it wasn't none of that, bro. We was fucking wrestling. We, I said, nigga, I seen what I seen. Like, get the fuck away from me, bro. Get the fuck away from me, right? So I'm in the cell. I'm telling myself, buddy, I'm like, bro. Old man fucking Paul over there gobbling on fucking little Eric. No, nobody believes me. Nobody fucking believes me. JJ believes me, but nobody, they're like, yo, they ain't, they ain't no fucking way. Ain't no way this little ass kid come out the next morning. Old man Paul's out there for breakfast, and he's dying to talk to me. He's 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 like itching to be like, bro, Perry, man, we got to talk. We got to talk, Perry. Bro, we ain't got nothing to talk about. Ain't got nothing to talk about. For, pref for like for the reality, like I don't give a fuck if you gay, bro. You gay, be fuck gay. It shit don't mean none to me. I just want to know. Like you ain't gonna be cutting my fucking hair, rubbing all on my ears and shit. But why you think of some weird shit? So me and Paul cut ties from that moment forward. A couple days, couple weeks go by. These two are inseparable. Paul and Eric, fucking inseparable. Oh man, Paul start falling in love with little Eric. I mean, this real shit. I mean, like real shit, like. Like in love with the boy, 
He don't give a fuck what nobody say. He try and move in the cell with little Eric. Well, now everybody want to tear no Eric is out. So Eric got suitors, bro. Eric got Eric got probably 10 head of dudes trying to bunk with him now. Like, like now that the word is out that little Eric don't give a fuck. He got he he got old man that like you got motherfuckers ain't never gone home. Like this boy might as well be gold to these motherfuckers. So now everybody trying to get a little Eric. Oh man, Paul is trying to figure out ways to get little Eric in his cell with him. So old man Paul trying to figure out old man Paul think he gonna tell on his cell buddy. His cell buddy was I think he was Crips. I'm not sure he was from out of DC somewhere too. But old man Paul think he gonna tell on his cell buddy for having a knife in the cell, get him locked up, and he gonna slide little Eric in there. So they were, that was a bad idea, real bad idea for Paul in a number of ways. So the police come in there, lock his cell buddy up, but immediately the cell buddy know, ain't nobody know where he really kept his shit at. So there was only one man who could have told on him. So he's immediately putting out word to all his buddies on the tier. Like, yo, they got me, but I'm telling you, it's because of old man Paul. He he the one that told on me. So now old man Paul got ready, people ready to kill him. Ready to kill him for that. So old man Paul got to check in. Old man Paul locks himself up. He goes down PC for probably fucking, man, it was a long time before I ever saw him again. I was actually getting transferred out of ECI Eastside going to Annex. Probably close to 10, 11 months later. And I'm in kind of like the like the pack up kind of like move area towards like the front of the jail. And I see old man Paul coming in in handcuffs, pushing his little lockup cart. They was finally going to send him out of the fucking jail. But yo, this fucking one picture, this one fucking picture of me and my man JJ immediately took me back to that day. And I banged on that fucking door and that towel come down. And that old man had a mouth full of dick. Full of dick. Bro, oh my God. Like, oh Lord Almighty.